Hello friends of the Electrified Charging Farm and welcome to Electrified Spiker, your channel all around Skoda's e-mobility. My name is Matthias and we are in the midst of How to Skoda EV. This time episode 5, how to drive efficiently. Because this is a question asked quite often. In the last episode we have looked at charging your Skoda EV. Now you might think I'm too often at the charger, how to reduce that consumption. And then you're in the right place in this video. You might already know a bit of this from your combustion engine car yet there are some specific parts when it comes to a Skoda EV or an EV in general and this video is not only for those who are starting out with an EV or who are switching over from a different brand it is for all of you because I get asked quite often how do you manage to get such low consumption as shown on your test drive and I managed to drive that with my Skoda Enyaq RS over 158 kilometers with an average speed of nearly 60 kilometers an hour with less than 13.5 kilowatt hours uh, 100 kilometers and if you want to do something similar well watch this video here we go but what does efficiency really mean when we talk about vehicles well for me it's quite simple a car exists to move us from a to b its efficiency is measured by how much of the energy it uses actually to go into driving that's what I call efficiency or overall let's say drivetrain efficiency so we stick with the car as a system we do not look outside of the car that might be a topic for another video and your Skoda EV is already very efficient by design from the battery to the wheels around 80 percent or more of the energy is actually used for movement and that's what the car is meant for otherwise you could not even be able to drive around 400 to 550 kilometers on a battery with, for example, only 77 kilowatt hours. Just for comparison, a typical combustion engine f like a Kodiak or Karok carries about 55 liters of fuel. And that is roughly 540 kilowatt hours of energy. And with that, of course, it goes around 900 to 1,100 kilometers. But let's do the calculation otherwise. So your Skoda EV with a 77 kilowatt hour battery carries only 7.8 liters of diesel. And a diesel engine from a Karok or Kodiak, depending on your driving style, would manage to go 100 to 150 kilometers with that. You and your EV are rough are able to drive roughly three times more with the same energy as the combustion engine car because the secret of a combustion engine is the fuel it's not the engine it's the energy density of the fuel and with an EV with your Skoda EV it's the other way round it's not your battery it's the electric engines the electric motors which are so efficient and because we carry around only so little energy we should use it wisely and therefore the tips in this video might apply and help you basic principle number one energy you don't need you don't have to use what I want to say with that energy not spent from the battery is the best energy because it stays in your battery so accelerate gently especially since EVs usually have a lot of power take your Skoda EV for example might have 210 kilowatts 250 kilowatts that's a lot of power and avoid high power output of course it's tempting to put pedal to the metal to feel that power yet the more power you put on the battery the more current you put on it the higher the internal resistance and with higher internal resistance comes more heat losses therefore accelerating gently helps you to stay efficient and of course as you might already heard from the first lesson in driving school avoid unnecessary acceleration that is a classic one right so only accelerate to the speed limit or to the speed you want to drive do not over accelerate and directly have to brake again way too much losses are waiting there so drive with foresight slow down early for curves and roundabouts and stops and the car helps you with that uh, the eco assists even shows you on the display the tips when should you 
take the foot off the pedal? When is the next bend? How fast should you go through it? And it helps you to preserve energy here. So the rule of thumb is don't build up movement energy. You are just going to waste right away with braking. Basic principle number two, letting the car roll, the art of coasting or however you call it. The best braking energy is the one you never had to use. So ideally, you just keep using the kinetic energy already built up for rolling or coasting. And then only the friction of the tires and the air resistance comes into place. Take off your foot of the pedal early and let the car roll whenever possible. The losses are minimal here and this is way better than regenerative braking or mechanical braking. But even in driving mode D, where I said in the first part of the series that your car is rolling, there is a slight regeneration recuperation going on, which is around one to three kilowatts and you have a slightly blue bar filled in your cockpit display. The reason lies in the electric motor, the so-called APP 550, which is a PSM, a permanent magnet synchronous motor. There are therefore permanent magnets in the rotor, which always generate a magnetic field. When the car moves, a voltage therefore is induced in the stator as the rotor is moving in the stator. Regardless of whether current is supplied by the battery or not, and if no current is supplied, as this is the case when you are rolling, well, there is still a minimal braking effect because there is still a minimal current generated from those motors. And only if you switch in the gearbox to neutral to N and thus decouple the drivetrain from the movement of the car, the motor will no longer rotate and the effect is no longer present. And with that, keep in mind when you are driving in mode D, as already explained here on the channel, coasting starts when you step off the pedal. But if you are a B driver, then if you step off the pedal, regenerative bra braking kicks in. And therefore you need a fine-tuned foot to hit that sweet spot between regenerative braking and accelerating. But with a bit of practice, you get used to this and can do coasting even in drive mode B. And with that, basic principle number three, regenerative braking when you do have to slow down instead of mechanical braking. This is the magic your EV has and the combustion engine car doesn't have. So you can recover energy through the motor instead of using the mechanical brakes. And the best news is your Skoda EV does this automatically. No matter how you brake, the car will first try to regenerate energy, then use the mechanical brakes if nothing else is possible. And this regeneration converts motion back into electricity and feeds that as chemical energy in your battery. Keep in mind, this is not a lossless process. There is no such thing as free energy. So, for an example, if you spend one kilowatt hour for accelerating your car, and then you kick in regenerative braking, you will recover about 70 to 80% of that energy. That is back in your battery. But as I already said at the beginning, the car is not built for making energy. The car is built for motion, for driving. Therefore, we have to calculate the losses again, which occur when we start driving. So again, let's go with 80% drivetrain efficiency. And that gives you roughly 60% efficiency when it comes to regenerative braking. So from that one kilowatt hour spent, you get six, uh, you get 600 watt hours or 0.6 kilowatt hours back. If you have to brake, do regenerative braking. And with that, keep in mind, if the battery is charged to 100%, that regenerative blue bar is already limited and you cannot regenerate so much energy. The worst thing you can do is charge up on a pass to 100%, then going down the pass and have to waste all that energy. And now we are at the last resort, mechanical braking. If all else fails, we talk about the mechanical brakes come into play. Of course, your Skoda EV has them. They turn kinetic energy into heat through friction. So 100% loss of that energy for the purpose of the car. But, and this has nothing to do with efficiency, there's one exception. Once or twice a month, I would force my Skoda EV to do a mechanical brake to maintain the brakes because you barely use them 
in everyday life. And the best th way to do it is when you're on a highway exit ramp, shift to N so you disengage the motors from the drivetrain and then brake. Therefore, the car, your car cannot apply regenerative braking, had to brake mechanically, and then just brake. And afterwards, just fit, uh, just switch back to D or B and continue driving. Efficiency is not only about driving, it's also about additional consumption in the car. So, for example, heating and cooling. As, as your heating and cooling is the one with the most consumption possible, your heating and cooling unit, despite you have a, a heat pump or not, can take up to over five kilowatts. And with that, we are also again at that chattery in the bar, right? That EV drivers have to be cold in winter and that they have to sweat in summer. No, efficiency is not about comfort loss, but you have options. For example, activating seat and steering wheel heaters is far more efficient than cabin heating. Just to be clear here comfort matters. If you're cold or if you're sweating, that's no fun. So turn on the AC, use it, because your AC will roughly take about one to three kilowatt hours uh, under normal conditions. So don't panic with heating and cooling when it comes to range. We could also talk about the windows, the wheels and everything else. And what really makes a difference here is open the window or the sunroof is not a good idea because your car is optimized for air resistance with everything closed. The worst thing you can do is having the AC running whilst the windows and the sunroof is open. So in most cases you're better off keeping all those windows closed and use your AC. And what has this to do with wheels? Well, Smaller rims, for example, 19 inch ones, use less energy than larger ones, like 20 ones. And therefore, if you go with smaller wheels, you have more range. But only if you check the tire pressure. If you have not a good tire pressure on your wheels, you can lose all the advantage here. So when the seasons change and you change your tires, check air pressure. One thing overlooked quite often is use EV specific tires. Yes, all big manufacturers have them. Yes, they are more expensive, yet they have a lower rolling resistance. And if you got rather cheap ones and compare them to those, you will see the difference. And finally, some small but useful tips. Remove the roof racks when not in use. A roof rack on an EV quickly makes up to 20 to 25 percent more consumption. And don't worry about your sound system. Even if you have the Canton setup, that's 675 watts at maximum. And under normal con uh, circumstances, it's, it will be 0 0.2 kilowatt hours. So it doesn't matter at all. Another thing, weight isn't such a huge factor. You're always being told remove uh, unnecessary weight from your car. Yet your Skoda EV is already really heavy. So just removing 100 kilograms don't take that much into effect, especially as you can use the more weight when regenerative braking kicks in. But of course, if you want to optimize to a maximum, weight is also an option to get more efficiency, but not much. This is already it. Some basic tips and tricks around driving efficient and you will see the difference in your consumption. Of course, you can take that to the extreme. Maybe you have already heard from something like hypermiling, driving at exactly the uh, speeds where the electric motors are most efficient and shut off all additional consumption and, 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 and. But this is not necessary. Driving should be fun. Driving should be combined with comfort and not with sacrifice, especially not in an EV. You don't have to, so don't do it. And with these tips and this video, you will lower your consumption, I'm pretty sure. And write me in the comments if you've got additional tips or questions. I am here to answer them. And I hope you liked that video. Then give it a thumbs up. 
subscribe to the channel so you do not miss out any new episode on how to Škoda EV. There are still some important topics coming up in the next episodes. And maybe you consider to give me a small donation via bank transfer, PayPal or whatever method you like. Because if I help you, you can help me with that to make even more of this content and bring that to the channel. And thanks to all of my supporters who helped me run this channel full time. You are so great. You rock. Thank you very much. And I hope we see each other in the next episode of How to Škoda EV. And until then, stay full of energy.